After voyaging across vast oceans and seas throughout their lifespan, most ships ultimately confront the prospect of being dismantled and repurposed. Certain components from these ships might even be utilized in the construction of new boats. However, this destiny does not befall every ship. Instead, some find themselves transformed into wrecks or deserted shells, slowly corroding away in isolated and neglected corners of the world. Today, we shed light on these vessels, sharing their stories in this video as we begin our countdown. Number 10. Ever Prosperity Twin Ships Sinking one ship due to mishap is unfortunate. Sinking two ships at the same location comes across as sheer carelessness. It's truly astounding to contemplate that such a scenario could occur, yet it unfolded in New Caledonia, within the South Pacific during the 1960s. What may appear as a solitary shipwreck in the images is in fact a depiction of two wrecks. In 1965, a Korean captain guided the Ever Prosperity, a Liberty-class ship from its home port in Monrovia, Liberia. However, as it approached the West Coast Barrier Reef, the vessel encountered difficulties and grounded. The ship's predicament was irreparable, resulting in abandonment. A subsequent decision by the Liberian shipyard led to the construction of another vessel of identical class and naming it Ever Prosperity. Astonishingly, this newly crafted ship ended up under the command of the same captain in 1970. He proceeded to wreck it in the exact location where the first mishap occurred. Both shipwrecks remain visibly present along the shoreline with the 1965 version exhibiting better preservation than its younger counterpart. One can only hope that the captain reconsidered his role after the second incident. Number 9. New Carissa Under the ownership of the Japanese company Nippon Yusen Kaisha, the New Carissa served as a dry bulk freighter primarily tasked with transporting wood chips. The concept of a 36,000 ton vessel carrying wood chips might raise eyebrows, and you're not alone in this query. As is often the case in such narratives, the ship's crew had been cautioned against entering Coos Bay due to unfavorable weather conditions. Despite being empty at the time, the ship's captain directed the crew to drop anchor at a location two miles off the coastal line. The weather deteriorated rapidly, leading to an inadvertent movement of the ship. Remarkably, the crew remained oblivious to the ship. Consequently, the ship ran aground and eventually split into two sections due to hull breach. To prevent an ecological catastrophe caused by fuel spillage, the ship was deliberately burned using napalm. The bow was towed away and sunk in open waters, while the stern remained a fixture of the landscape until 2008, at which point it was dismantled. Some remnants of metal are likely still present in the shallow waters near Coos Bay. Number 8. Tangaluma Rex For those intrigued by shipwrecks and possessing a snorkeling enthusiasm, a visit to Australia's Tangaluma Island Resort offers a remarkable fusion of these interests. The Tangaluma wrecks is a result of the Queensland government intentionally sinking 15 ships over two decades, starting in 1963, to create a haven for boat anchorage. These wrecks now serve as habitats for diverse marine life. Over 100 fish species have been documented around the wrecks, occasionally accompanied by visiting dolphins, while years submerged have caused varying degrees of decay. The outline of the Maryborough, crafted in 1885, remains discernible, providing a captivating view from the safety of the shoreline. Number 7. SS Crete Boom Ireland, despite its relatively small land area, boasts a considerable number of shipwrecks dotting its coastlines and river edges. A particularly noteworthy wreck is situated in Bolina, Co. Mayo, where the abandoned SS Crete Boom remains forever ensnared in the embrace of the River Moy. This century-old vessel stands out not only for its age, but also for its peculiar choice of construction materials. A consequence of the scarcity of traditional shipbuilding resources during World War I, the SS Crete Boom was built in 1917 and initially engaged in ferrying iron ore from Spain to England. Post-war, a London-based company acquired the ship, repurposing it for the transportation of coal between mainland Europe. Its arrival in Ireland came in 1937, a time when its condition had significantly deteriorated, earmarked for use as part of a river barrier. A tragic twist of fate saw the vessel encounter rocks during its journey, leading to flooding. While efforts to save it were limited, the ship was towed midstream where it has remained ever since, a silent sentinel of maritime history. Number 6. Aral Sea In Uzbekistan, the Aral Sea stands as a renowned ship graveyard. What was once a bustling fishing hub succumbed to this fate 
due to the Soviet government's redirection of two feeding rivers to irrigate the desert for cotton farming. The sea began dwindling in the 1960s, eventually cleaving into the North and South Aral Seas by 1987. As a result, numerous ships were forsaken by their owners, transforming the fishing towns into a haunting maritime cemetery. Number 5. USS Inaugural In St. Louis, Missouri stands the rusted relic of the USS Inaugural, a strikingly identifiable wreck compared to the more enigmatic tugboat graveyard nearby. This abandoned ship was once a formidable, admirable class minesweeper, bravely serving in World War II, including combat operations in Okinawa. Her significance, however, was long behind her when she found her way to St. Louis. Initially repurposed as a floating war museum, the vessel was tragically upended by the devastating Great Flood of 1993, dragging her down the Mississippi River where she came to rest, sunken and tilted, just half a mile away. Access to her remained elusive for almost two decades, until an unusual dry spell in 2012 exposed her decaying hull. The forlorn sight was a stark reminder of her former glory. Unfortunately, her fate was sealed, deemed fit only for graffiti artist canvases, and eventually sold for scrap, marking a somber conclusion to her illustrious history. Number 4. Concrete Ship in Astrakhan While the concept of a concrete ship might appear unusual, it wasn't exclusively a Great Britain endeavor from the past. The remnants of another such vessel can be found in the lower reaches of the Volga near Astrakhan in Russia, in close proximity to the Caspian Sea. Limited information exists about this peculiar wreck, which presents a hybrid composition, combining concrete and steel elements. Given its dimensions and interior layout, it's plausible to speculate that it once operated as a tanker. The unguarded state of the ship allows curious individuals to explore its interiors. Evidently, water has seeped into the lower decks, and certain areas exhibit the degradation of concrete, revealing the underlying steel mesh that once provided structural integrity. The ship has been abandoned for an extended duration, and unfortunately, it has reached a state beyond salvage. Number 3. Ship Graveyard Situated in the Bay of Noadubo, Mauritania, lies the world's largest ship graveyard. This haunting site is host to an astonishing array of shipwrecks, many of which were illicitly brought here. Exploiting lax enforcement, corrupt shipping firms and private proprietors found it cost-effective to abandon vessels in the bay rather than adhering to proper disposal procedures. Despite the local authorities' responsibility to hold ship owners accountable, allegations of bribery cast doubt on their inaction. The scandalous operation gained notoriety in the 1980s, drawing an assortment of unwanted ships from around the globe, naval cruisers, fishing trawlers, cargo carriers, and more. The unsettling spectacle now boasts over 300 decaying wrecks, bearing testament to a disheartening tale of neglect and irresponsibility. Number 2. SS America Launched in 1939, the SS America emerged as a splendid sea liner acclaimed for embodying both the United States' technological prowess and its refined grace. Operated by the United States lines, the ship assumed diverse roles, transitioning from a passenger vessel to a troop carrier during World War II, showcasing its adaptability and durability. Amid the war, it was rebranded the USS West Point, and its lavish interiors were stripped to enable troop conveyance. Leveraging its considerable speed and dimensions, it effectively transported a substantial contingent of soldiers, making a valuable contribution to the war endeavors. Following the war's conclusion, it reverted to its original passenger liner role, yet its peak moments gradually receded. In the late 1960s, it was acquired by the Chandris Group and underwent a renovation to function as an Australian immigrant ship thus embarking on a new phase of existence under the name Australis. Today, all that remains of the SS America is a poignant outline of the corrosion and desolation partially submerged and battered by the elements. Its hull stands as a somber testament to a vessel that once sailed with elegance and purpose. Number 1. Mary Duhum Nestled in Florence, Oregon, USA, the Mary Duhum may appear abandoned and forsaken, Yet this is not entirely accurate. Rather, she was intentionally brought here to gracefully succumb to the passage of time. Her tale originated in 1889, when she was acquired as an Arctic whaling vessel and embarked on two decades of service in the Bering Sea. Purchased by the American Tugboat Company in 1909, she underwent transformations to serve as an ocean tugboat, only to shift to halibut duties in 1914, pursuing these fish in Alaskan waters. Resuming tugboat duties for another six decades, 
Her eventual career came to a close in 1978 as she sailed back to the port of Gold Beach, near where she first set sail. Despite her age and weathered appearance, which is unsurprising considering her early 150-year existence, Mary D. Hume stands as a testament to time's passage and history's echoes. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on our channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.